Hello everyone and welcome to the Empowering People International Broadcast. My name is Dr. Stanley Williams and this is my beautiful wife, Dr. Bettina Williams. We want you to know that the devil is defeated and Jesus is Lord. He's the God of all seasons. That means that miracles are happening no matter what the season is, even in our hour, God is still a supernatural God. God has called you to victory and triumph. In fact, he's coming back for a glorious church, not a defeated, broke down, frustrated, defeated church, but he's coming back for a church that is full of glory, power, and authority. The Bible says that in the last days, perilous times will come. We're living in that day and that hour, but God wants for you to arise and shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Get ready for a word that is going to reflect the glory and the power that God has released in your direction. It's a setup for your greatest hour of victory. Let's go to the word. Well, God bless you and welcome to the broadcast today. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dr. Beth Tina Williams and I'm here with my husband, Apostle Dr. Stanley Williams. And we are continuing and going to finish today a series that we've been ministering concerning the purpose of conscience. And today we're going to talk about the mark of a clear conscience and how it gives you freedom. So in regards to the purpose of a conscience, you want to have a free and a clear conscience, one that is Holy Spirit led and guided, and one to where God causes you to walk in the liberty and the freedom of the Spirit of God. Let's get ready to go into the Word of God, and before we do, let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for your people. We thank you for the person that is watching us right now. We ask you to minister. We ask you to guide. We ask you to speak by your Holy Spirit. Let the glory and the anointing of your presence minister to them right where they are and speak a word of hope, a word of life, a word of clarity and direction so that they can live life to the fullest in the eyes of you, God, and they can fulfill your purpose and plan, unhindered and unabated by any satanic, demonic, or human force. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We decrease, and you must increase. We exalt you, and we magnify your holy name. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Feel our midst and feel the midst of where everyone is today for your glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. God bless you, Apostle. I want to welcome everybody today again to the broadcast. And thank you for being a part of amen. our Empowering People family. We love you amen. in Jesus Christ. We love you. We love you. We love you. And we know and you know that God loved you also. Today we're talking about the mark. What is the mark of a clear conscience? And we call that freedom from condemnation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 1 John 3, 18 through 24 says this, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Mm -hmm. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us, condemn then we us have not. confidence, condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, 
because we keep his commandments yeah. and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Yeah. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him, and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit mm -hmm. which he has given us. Amen. Our goal as believers should be to have a conscience that is void of offense, mm. to walk totally free of condemnation, to be at peace with God and at peace with our neighbors and those that are around us. This is the will of God. The conscience is designed to communicate the difference between right and wrong, to make us sensitive to right and wrong. And when the Holy Spirit is involved, of course, the Holy Spirit alongside the human conscious brings us into, or helps guide us into right standing with God. He will lead you into all truth. Now, Romans chapter 8, verse 1 is another very powerful passage, and it says this, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And finally, Paul, in Acts chapter 23, verse 1, says this, And looking intently at the council, Paul said, Brothers, I have lived my life before God, in all good conscience until this day. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, praise God. We're just talking about our heart and our ability to walk with a God conscience according to the Holy Spirit and the Word of God who ministers the truth of God to us, where God does not condemn us. God is not a condemning God. He's not a God that removes all hope, but he's a God that gives hope and gives life. And so as we are not condemned by God, we have to also walk in the truth of God toward others and let them be free. And in freeing others, we are freeing ourselves. You know, if I hold art, animosity, anger, resentment toward you, toward someone else, how can I expect to be free in my own heart, in my own soul? I've learned one thing. I've learned something very real and dear to me. Every time I release somebody else, I have a sense of freedom, a sense of peace, a sense of renewed re and refreshing presence of the Holy Spirit in my own life. So I found that it's, it's, it's wiser, it's better, it's even better for my own well-being and my sense of wholeness when I release others, when I forgive others, when I don't hold any odd animosity or grudges. Is it always easy? Certainly, of course, certainly not. Of course not. It's not easy but I've learned to do it as an act of my will. And also, when we are able to do that and we learn to do it, it becomes our manner of life, our manner of living, and we become skilled, we become mature, we become sharper, more, we become stronger, and even more able to continue to forgive fast, release others quickly, don't hold grudges, don't hold animosity, don't hold bitterness and resentment toward others because it defiles the heart, it defiles you, and it makes you unclean, impure, and, and miserable. And misery loves company. That old, old adage, misery loves company, and hurt people hurt people. When you see someone where they are unforgiving, they hold years of, of animosity, or we say animus, anger, bitterness toward others. It's so negative until it's like, how do you live like that? How do you keep that kind of a mindset? Because I've learned that to the pure, all things are pure. And when we want to serve God, we want to serve him from a pure heart. We want to serve him from a heart that is godly and that has a conscious awareness that I'm in the presence of the king. 
I'm in the presence of the Most High God, and I want for Him to be pleased with my life. So I can't just say I know God in a religious way, and I'm holding on to years of unforgiveness, years of bitterness, years of resentment and anger toward other people. How can I stand in the presence of God, lifting up holy hands when my heart is not pure, yes. when my heart is not clean, when my heart has not received the ministry of the Holy Spirit? And the Holy Spirit guides us to say, you know what? It's not worth it. I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to forgive him. I'm going to forgive her. And you know what? I choose to let it go. And I know that God is going to reward me. God is going to restore to me what I lost. God is going to heal me. God is going to provide for me. God is going to make a way for me. And God is watching over me. And I trust God with my life. And I trust God with my future. That helps me to keep a pure and a clean, a clear conscience. And that helps me to be free indeed by the Holy Spirit, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty. And that's how you want to live before God in accordance to his word. Apostle? You know, having a conscience that's, that is void of offense yes. means that you understand your high priestly duty before God. When the scripture says, when you bring something to the, you bring your gift to the altar and you recognize realize that your brother has offense against you. And I'm going to add in there, just as a paraphrase, even if you have ought against your brother, go to your brother, reconcile with your brother, win your brother's heart, then bring your gift to the altar. So that's what you're really saying. The high priestly service that we do before God depends on the purity of our hearts. Yes and the purity of our conscience. Now, one great writer said this, the conscience is like a window that lets in light. Mm -hmm. When the window becomes soiled, the light gradually becomes darkness. Mm. Once the conscience is defiled, it gradually gets worse, and eventually it may even be seared. That means it has no sensitivity. Then it becomes an evil conscience and one that functions just the opposite of a good conscience. That's a great quote. Now, Titus chapter 1 verse 15 says this, and this is why you want a clean, clear, pure conscience. Unto the pure, all things are pure. Mm -hmm. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure but even their mind and their conscience is defiled. That's what we just said. Mm -hmm. Now, when the conscience is seared, it means cauterized. Yes. That's where that word yes. comes from. To cauterize means to touch with a hot iron and to eliminate the sensitivity that's in that area. Mm -hmm. Now, that's why we use the analogy of a leper because a leper the mark of leprosy is that a leper can't feel. Right. He can knock off a finger. He wouldn't right. even know it. Right. He can't feel anything. There's a lack of sensitivity. So how is it that someone can be unforgiving for 30 years and not feel mm -hmm. the, the, the convicting power of the Spirit, mm -hmm. especially if they're a Christian? And, and, and realize, not realizing that Satan wreaks havoc mm -hmm. because of that continual anger that is there. Mm -hmm. As well as you're in trouble with God because he says, if you don't forgive your brother, I yes. won't forgive you. So it is, it's not even worth it holding on to it. So our, our prayer for you, for everyone that's listening today, no matter who you are, let it go. That's right. That's right. Let it go. It's yeah. not it's not going to benefit you and it's not going to benefit those that you're ministering to because you're attempting to minister to people out of the defiled heart yourself. I'd like to encourage every one of you to begin to seriously meditate in the word of God. Remember what the psalmist David said. If you meditate in the word day and night, you'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. I believe that everything that you set your hands to do will prosper. And I believe 
that God is interested in your prayer life. Develop that prayer life. Begin to stand up in God's face and begin to declare the word of God. God loves it when he's in communication with his people. In Jesus' name. This is an exciting time in history. We are seeing the word of God unfold and come into full manifestation every day, just watching the news. So I wanna encourage you, get your news from the original source. Stay in the word of God daily. And as you stay in the word of God, enjoying with daily communion and prayer, talking to the Father, he will show you things to come and he will manifest his power to you. In fact, God has ordained for you to be in the driver's seat. He's ordained for you to be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, blessed and not cursed. God wants for you to be a difference maker and a change agent. In other words, God has put you in a position of power and authority because we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And he's ordained for you to walk a life of victory in the word. Let's go back to the word of God. And you know what? This is one thing that we, I think it's important to approach and, and, and consider it from this vantage point and perspective. And that is, what do I do to ensure that I have a clear and a clean, undefiled conscience? That's it. How do I maintain a clear and undefiled conscience? It's got to be through the Word of God. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter five, that we are washed by the water of the word. No, That's actually right. it's Ephesians chapter four. Right. Ephesians chapter four, where um, God is talking about the bride and it is the mystery of the bride with her husband and how he washes her by the water of the word. The word of God, when you look into it daily, it's like a mirror. It changes, it renews, it renovates, it revives, it refreshes, it regenerates, it transforms the mind, the heart, the soul to reflect Christ. It purifies the heart. When you study and you meditate on the word of God as your daily bread, as a necessity, as a conviction and not a preference, not a pastime, not a hobby, but it is a conviction to your soul so that you are living your life in the guardrails and the boundaries of God's word as a standard of life for your behavior, for your conscience, for your, your, your principles, your moral values. Then you can live a life that is free with a conscience that is, and a heart that is pure. That's why David said, you know, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. I love your word more than my necessary meat. Your word is more important to me than the food I eat because the word of God is nourishment to our souls. It brings, it revives us, it strengthens us, it helps us. And then when we go to God in prayer, and we pray being led by the Holy Spirit. He also washes us and leads us and guides us and, and helps us in that renewal process so that we come out looking, acting, behaving, thinking, and speaking like Christ Jesus, our Lord, so that we are reflecting the fruit of the Holy Spirit, his love, his joy, his peace, his patience, his gentleness and goodness, his faith, faithfulness, his mm. temperance and self-control so that we're living the kind of Holy Spirit led life that reflects the very glory, the very kingdom and principles of our God. And we're living a life where there's no condemnation, but there is liberty and we walk in the freedom 
of the Holy Spirit in our mind. So many people are in bondage in their minds, Apostle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean people that should be stronger, mm -hmm. people that should be further along in life, sadly, mm -hmm. are walking in bondage to their own selves and their own minds because of the inability or the refusal to adopt the principles of God's word and to live by them as a principle to say, I release all others. I forgive all others and I will hold no one into bondage. I condemn no one because I'm not God. I release all others. And Father, I ask you to forgive and release me so that I'm living a life that is pure, that is holy, and reflects the kind of life that Jesus yes. paid for and died on Calvary's cross for, shedding his blood for me. Apostle. The suggestion is, I want to make this suggestion. Religion is not enough. No, no. The religious leaders of Jesus' day, yes. when, when the woman was caught in the act of mm -hmm. adultery, they had a conscience so, so much so that they walked away. And Jesus told the young woman, he said, where are your accusers? And she said, I don't see any. He said, then neither do I accuse you. His, his mission was to forgive her. Their mission, even though they were yes. very religious, was to condemn her. To condemn Same her. thing yes. with, with, with Pilate and the situation there. The religious leaders were condemning. Pilate was a pagan. Mm -hmm. But he was trying to let Jesus go. His wife wasn't a Christian. Mm -hmm. I don't know for sure, but I don't think so. It could be. But she, was, she had a dream, and she told Pilate, don't touch him. Have mm -hmm. nothing this to do with this man. good man, this just man. Mm -hmm. And so Pilate was doing everything in his power to let Jesus go. They took a robber and a murderer in Barabbas before they were Jesus and, and, mm -hmm. and sentenced them to the cross. But now that was his mission from the beginning. But the issue was their hearts. And I'm going to end with this because this is extremely important. In Acts chapter 2, this is where I'm going to bring it down. Acts chapter 2, verse 36. These are the same religious people that condemned Jesus. Peter is preaching and he's preaching and he's preaching in Acts mm -hmm. chapter 2. And then all of a sudden, the scripture says they were pricked in their hearts. That's Acts chapter 2, verse 37. That's the conscience waking up. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they realize, mm -hmm. oh, my God, we did do that. Mm -hmm. And they begin to reap. And Peter gave them instruction. They begin to repeat, to repent, and they begin to turn their hearts toward God. So even though they were abusive to Jesus, mm -hmm. God still let them come into the kingdom. That's amazing to me that God could forgive so easy. Even Jesus on the cross, forgive them. They know not what they do. Imagine being able to forgive someone, the freedom, the liberty that would come to your soul if you could just release. Amen. Let's pray. We want to pray with you today. May God give you the grace to forgive, to release, to set others free, and may he bless you and set you free. May God make you whole in the, in the spirit of mm. your mind, in your heart. May he renew and refresh, revive, regenerate you, and restore your soul. May God heal you and make mm. you whole. We plead the blood of Jesus over your life right now. And we ask God, Father, heal and set her free. Set him free today. Father, let your Holy Spirit breathe the breath of life, of healing, of restoration, of love. Father God, into their mm. lives right now and restore their souls. Father, where they've been broken, where they've been wounded, where they've been forgotten, where they feel misused, abused, ignored, rejected. Father God, overlooked. We mm. ask you to cause them to know right now that you see, you're Elroy, you're the God who sees, you care, and you love them with an unfailing, unconditional love. And I pray right now that if you don't know Jesus Christ, in your heart as your Lord and Savior, that you will accept him mm. now, knowing that Jesus came to give you life and that more abundantly. 
will you pray with us? Father God, Father God, I come to you. I come to you just as I am. Just as I am. And I ask you. And I ask you to wash me. To wash and me. And cleanse me. Cleanse me. Make me free. Make me free of all my sins. Of all my sins. I confess my sins. I confess my sins. And I ask you. And I to ask save you me now. To save me I now. I give you my life. I give you my I life. I give you my whole heart. I give you my whole heart. And I ask you. And I ask to you live to live and reign in me. And reign and in me. And guide me. And guide by me. your holy. Spirit by your for Holy the Spirit rest of my for life. the rest of I my believe life. I believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is your son. Is your he died son. on the cross. He died on the to cross. Give me life to give me and life that more abundantly. And that more and abundantly. I receive and I receive his sacrifice. His sacrifice as a gift. As in a Jesus gift. name. In Jesus' amen name. And amen. Amen. If you prayed with Apostle and I, we encourage you to reach out to us. Let us know how the ministry has blessed you today. And if you need to be baptized, let us know so that we can help you to be baptized. It's important to be baptized because the, the water washes away all of our sins by faith. It is a reflection of the fact that our sins have been washed away and we've been saved and redeemed and we've been born again by the Spirit of mm. God. God is real and his angels are rejoicing over you coming to Christ. Be sure to go to our ministry website and we want to thank you for partnering with us, yes. praying with us, being a faithful supporter of this ministry. So into the ministry as God blesses you so that we can continue to transform lives by the word of God and be a blessing to America and the nations around the world because God loves you and he loves everybody. Thank you so much for your support. Go to our ministry website. We're looking forward to hearing from you. Remember also again that that person standing next to you is important. Love on them. And remember that God is able, He's able to, keep, to us keep us from falling. falling. God bless you. God bless you. We want to thank you for being a part of our Empowering People International family. We so appreciate you. You are loved, and every soul that's impacted by this broadcast, you are a part of it. Remember that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to us. And as long as we have him, we have absolute victory. You have received the word of God today, and I want to encourage you to stand on it. Stand on the word of God and hold on to God because he's holding on to you. Believe God because he believes in you. He created you for victory. He created you for triumph. You shall not go down in defeat for one split second as long as you are standing on the rock of your salvation. And that's none other than Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is the Lord of the harvest. He is the Lord of victory. He's the Lord of triumph. And he is the Lord of the host of the armies of heaven. You're on the winning side. You're on God's side. Stand in the victory. God bless you.